We've already seen how we can slice and dice an object set using dot memory. Well, there's a lot to learn from the object sets. More information about our application's memory usage can be obtained from individual object instances. Let's see. The snapshots I've collected here have been used throughout the different dot memory screencasts. In the application, an advertisement is shown, and after clicking it, the advertisement window should be destroyed. If we open the snapshot where we click the advertisement, we can already see it's still there. That memory's automatic inspections have identified the ad window is kept in memory because of an event handler leak. We can double click it and dive into this instance details. Outgoing references show us all other objects referenced by our ad window. As it turns out, there are plenty of those. A treading dispatcher, a dependency object, a timer and much more. The key retention paths view shows us where the ad window is kept in memory. That is, which type is preventing our object from being collected. It seems in this case, a dispatcher timer is responsible for this. And more importantly, the diagram here shows us which event of the dispatcher timer is keeping our ad window alive, the tick event. Looking at the shortest paths to root, we can see this confirmed. The .NET runtime does not release the instance from memory because it's still referenced by an event handler that is subscribed to a dispatcher timer stick event. Now let's see if we can find out where we are subscribing this event handler so we know where to look in our source code. Double clicking the event handler will let us analyze the specific instance of the event handler. The incoming references view will tell us where the event handler is kept in memory. In this case, the tick event of a dispatcher timer that is stored in a field named addTimer on our add window class. That's great information already. We can learn more by looking at the creation stack trace. The event handler is created in the add window constructor. We now know where it is created and in which field of our object it is stored. All that's left is looking at our code and making sure we unsubscribe our event handler in the right location. To learn more about .memory, check our other screencasts. Thank you for watching. See ya.